All right, hey everybody, and welcome to day two of fasting and prayer. I hope that you have taken some time already to set uh, set apart your day to um, seek God, to pray, and to be in the Word. I've encouraged everybody, hey, let's take these next 21 days to fast and pray. Seek God. I believe that I'm going to share some things with you that are going to encourage you today. Uh, this is what I, my invitation is. Try to fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And when I say try to fast, I mean like fast 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, if you've never fasted before, I want to invite you to take like whatever the next step is. Fasting, what it's all about is um, it's abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. And so whenever you see in the Bible a fast called, they're always abstaining from food. You should drink fluids. There's only one instance of them uh, calling a fast where they don't drink fluids and it's only for a couple of days. Uh, that gets pretty challenging and somewhat risky anytime you go beyond that. But I want to encourage you, cut out food. Cut it out. Cut out if you need to get started with one meal a day. Set aside one meal a day. Uh, maybe it's dinner. And so you will have gone from lunch to breakfast the next day without eating. You know, that's about, oh, quite a few hours. 18 hours. And then Build it up from there. After you do a week of one meal a day, step into two meals a day, and then maybe you can make it to 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or even three meals a day for a small portion of that as well. Some of you might ask the question of, hey, should I cut out other things? Should I cut out TV? Should I cut out, you know, podcasts or social media and uh, certain music or types of movies? And, and I would say, absolutely. Like, there's one one of the primary benefits of fasting is that you're actually setting yourself apart for uh, to the Lord, and you're wanting to not just not eat, but we want some spiritual breakthrough. And one of the most important ways that we get spiritual breakthrough is clarity in our ability to hear from God. How do you get clarity to hear from God? Well, you cut out all these other voices and you feed on God's word. So I would absolutely encourage you, cut out video games, TV, movies, whatever it is that is just, you know, it's like garbage in and uh, and saturate yourself with the word of God. F open up your daily reading plan that you're following along with us at the gathering place. Uh, read more than that. Find some preachers who build your faith. And I don't mean just the ones that challenge you or the ones that make you afraid of what's going to happen or like they're going to help you with a Bible quiz. I mean the type of preachers who when you walk away, you're thinking, man, I can't help but to believe God. Like that's who you want to listen to. Anybody who makes you critical of the body of Christ or they make you afraid or, you know, you, you come away questioning, like, could we really believe or maybe throw those guys out. Don't listen to those guys at any time, especially not right now. Listen to people who make you want to believe the Bible. Right. And so we're not just trying to get intellectual knowledge, but I want to encounter Jesus. So so God uh, gives us his word. And he reveals himself through his word. And so we want to not only believe in God, but we want to believe him, right? And so a, a scripture that I think is so good, and I'll turn to this uh, from Psalm chapter 1. And this is something about cutting out the voices uh, that distract. It's Psalm 1 verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. So the Bible says there's a blessing on the person who cuts out all these voices, the ones who the counsel of the ungodly, Think about all the stuff you're hearing on the radio, the TV, you know, the podcasts, the social media. So much of that is truly ungodly. Even if it's for uh, an important cause, it's not always coming in a way that, that glorifies God. And so cut that stuff out. He says, cut out the, he says, don't stand in the path of sinners. You know, you can, you can be in line with people who are going the opposite direction that Christ is calling you to. So get out of the, get out of their way. Just get them get them out of here, out of here. 
It says, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. You know, listening to the mockers, those who would scorn or criticize or question or challenge or put down in Christ and in, in your faith. Get that stuff out of your heart, out of your eyes, out of your mind. Uh, cut it out. And it'd probably be a good idea to not just limit it to the 21 days of fasting and prayer, but to cut that stuff out of your life as much as possible. You see, one of the reasons why fasting, like biblical fasting, refers to food is you have to go back to it. So the, those other things that people cut out and they say, oh, I'm fasting this, I'm fasting that, I'm fasting sugar, I'm fasting uh, social media. Uh, that's not fasting. That's just called self-control. It's called growing up. It's called maturity. It's called uh, maybe I, I'm just actually, you know, I'm being mindful of what's coming in, the garbage in, garbage out. Uh, you can live without all of that. And so it's not a sacrifice to cut those things out. Fasting is, though. Fasting is a sacrifice. It is dying to the flesh. Uh, you have to eat. You have to go back to eating again. And so this is something that demonstrates to the Lord, God, I'm going to put aside my own desires and my own need, and, and I'm going to take this time to press into you. So I want to encourage you as much as possible. Uh, I know that for some people, one meal a day for 21 days is a huge stretch. And I think that it's, it's um, okay to call people to that. And whatever it is that is a big stretch to you, I want to encourage you, do that. Do that. And the reason for that is because, uh, well, let's just look at this, this principle here from Galatians chapter 5. Whenever you sow to the Spirit, you, you reap of the Spirit everlasting life. You reap the, the spiritual benefits to your spirit when you're sowing to the Spirit. But the Scripture says if you sow to the flesh, then of the flesh you'll reap corruption. And so for this here, we are sowing to the Spirit. We're pressing into spiritual things. We're dying to the things of the flesh here because we want to reap something. And how much do you want to reap? How much of a harvest do you want? Do you want to plant a couple seeds but to reap a huge harvest? It doesn't work that way. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. But if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. And if you sow bountifully or plentifully, you'll reap plentifully. So if you want God to show up in a huge way, you got to press in in a way that challenges you. If, you want, if you're expecting God to just perform these outrageous miracles and do such significant work in your life, but you're only willing to inconvenience yourself just a little bit, well, I think that you might be <laughs> disappointed in the results that you get. And this is just what the Bible teaches us. So I want to go over a couple things that I, I really feel are significant for us and I feel like God is going to do based on the Word. I feel like in the, these 21 days of fasting and prayer that we're going to accomplish more during this time than, than if we strive all year long. So we are, we are opening the floodgates. We are building momentum during these 21 days. We are setting the stage to get the ball rolling for God to open doors that we couldn't open, to make crooked paths straight, to, to give favor, to turn hearts, to prepare situations and settings and environments for us uh, to receive his favor and to see his hand move in the future. We will, be able, we will accomplish more during this time and set the stage for the rest of the year than if we gave it our best effort in the natural all year long. Second thing is, um, there are strongholds that maybe you have been unable to break, but as you pray and fast, you're going to gain the victory. We see this in Mark chapter 9 when a man brings his son to Jesus' disciples, and they couldn't cast him out. And he comes to them because they should be able to help him, but they can't. And so Jesus says, bring the child to me. He casts out the spirit. He asks the, kid, the guy, uh, how long has it been happening? It's been happening for years. And so Jesus' heart is to set people free and he has compassion, but he's a deliverer and he's a healer. And he wants his disciples to be able to do that as well and experience that kind of victory and freedom. Later on, they ask him, hey, why, can't, why couldn't we cast him out? Why couldn't we set this boy free? And uh, Jesus said, it's because of your faith, your lack of faith. You have small faith. Uh, however, this kind doesn't come out except through prayer and fasting. And so um, they're obviously, you know, maybe they had 
they had a certain degree of faith or maybe they had experienced the ability to cast out demons before, but this was another level of something they hadn't dealt with. Now, obviously, Jesus didn't stop and go away and pray and fast and then come back to this, but he had already cultivated this type of life and lifestyle so that when he was facing this situation, he was able to operate in the authority that God uh, had for him. And he's telling his disciples, you've got to build your faith up. That comes from hearing God's word and believing God's word. And you have to take time to pray and fast. So there's something significant about the word of God, praying and fasting, how that will um, gain victory for us in ways that we weren't able to gain without that. And so as you fast and pray, you will gain victory in areas of your life that you have not had victory in before. Here's another thing. Uh, I believe that many of you will get direction and even discover your calling as you pray and fast. Let's look at Acts chapter, Acts chapter 13. It's a story of Paul and Barnabas. Now, Paul had already been called by God for ministry, uh, but he wasn't fully released yet. And so there's a time in Acts chapter 13, it says, now as a church that was in Antioch, um, they, as they were there, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manian, um, and Saul, who would be called Paul. It says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul after they had ministered to the Lord and fasted. So they were worshiping, they were praying, and they were fasting. So I, we don't know how long they were fasting. It may have been one meal. It may have been three days. The early church, they fasted uh, typically on uh, two days a week and just as a regular practice. And so maybe that's what they were doing here. I don't know that. The Bible doesn't say, but it does say they were fasting. And when they were fasting, they had and set themselves apart. The Holy Spirit came in and speak, spoke to them. And so I really do believe this, that many of you will get direction and discover God's calling for your life as you pray and fast. After that happened, it says, then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and they sent them away. So then they fasted and prayed even longer after that as a result. So if you want direction in your life, if you want to know what God's purpose for you is, his calling, take time to fast and pray. It's just a biblical process. There are many people who are wondering, what is God calling me to do? What is God saying for me to do? But they're not fasting and praying. They're just going around wondering and they're never going to know. They're going to come up with good ideas. They're going to look up, you know, the, the job board and, and opportunities. They're going to talk to other people, but you got to get before the Lord and fast and pray and uh, humble yourself because that's what fasting does. It, David said, I humbled myself with fasting. And when you humble yourself, the Bible says God will lift you up. And sometimes he'll lift you up above those clouds that have obscured your vision and your ability to see the direction he's called you to go in. But when you humble yourself through fasting and prayer, he's going to lift you up and he's going to give you some clarity. He's going to give you some wisdom. Finally, this, as you pray and fast, God will reward you. I mentioned this yesterday, but I want to emphasize it to you again today. His blessing and favor on you will be evident to everybody. So we know that internally, when we seek the Lord, when we worship God, when we fill ourselves with his presence, when we set time apart to, to pray and to worship or, or just read the word, that God blesses us on the inside. That's why we can have joy on the inside when there's, there's uh, nothing but bad news on the outside. We can have peace on the inside when there's chaos all around us. And that's how you should be living as a Christian. You carry the weather on the inside. Uh, you have victory. And you have that, and it starts on the inside. But the scripture says, when you fast, in Matthew chapter 6, he said, when you fast, you go before your father in secret. You know, you don't, go at, you don't have to go tell everybody you're fasting, and look at me, it's just so hard to be a Christian. Don't do all that stuff. Just between you and the Lord, you're fasting. I mean, you can let your family know. You can let your boss know. You can let whoever else you, you want know. But we're not doing it for their uh, applause. We're doing it to seek the Lord. And the scripture says, Jesus said, 
when you do this, your father who is in secret will reward you openly. He's going to openly reward you, bless you, show up in your life, do some things in your life uh, so that everybody else can see this one's mine. This one's put me first. This one sought the kingdom first and his righteousness. Now all these things are being added to him. This one's in covenant with me. This one has taken the time to uh, to die to themselves and to live for me. And God has no problem blessing you. So maybe you need some breakthrough in your family. You need breakthrough in your in your business. You need breakthrough in your calling. You need breakthrough in your relationships and your health. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, healing associated with prayer and fasting in the days to come. But all of this, all of this is uh, a, it's a reward. It's it's a blessing that comes from the Lord, and and you're going to lay hold of that as you pray and fast. So I want to encourage you: 21 days of fasting and prayer. We've only got after today 20 days left, right? 19 days left, and so. Press in, take some time with Jesus, do whatever it takes. If you have to reschedule some gatherings, parties, meetings, or just show up and say, yeah, I'm going to have drink. <laughs> I'm just going to have tea or coffee or something like that, drink water. Uh, God is going to show up. Don't forget, though, we're not just fasting. We're praying. So pray. Take time to be in God's Word. We're sending out our daily devotions on Facebook during this time as well. So I hope this encourages you. I'm going to keep sending these emails out. Uh, if we can see you at church on Sunday, man, I'm I'm ready to to just I'm ready to hear from the Lord. I'm ready to see what He does in people's lives, and I want to hear your testimonies. So you can send me an email. You can make some comments below. But anything that God's doing, let's celebrate that. We love you. God bless you. Goodbye.